And if we can just go a little bit deeper with this love for others, remember that your soul is like this great big beam pushing out energy into the universe. And the truth is actually that every being and thing in the universe can actually feel your energy. Now, if your energy has a part of the energy you have is like anger, what's every being in the universe feeling? You're adding to the universal anger. Can you see that? If, and so, let's say your feeling is like even just basic things like, say, um, uh, this will trigger a few of you, e eating meat. How many eat meat still? Lots of them. Okay, okay. this will trigger all of it. When you eat meat, what are you saying to every animal? <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> what are you really saying to the animals? It's unsafe around me. Yeah, that's what you're really saying to your animals. To all animals. It's unsafe around me because one day you're going to be in my play. So what's the difference with plants and fruit and yeah. it's still a living being? Uh, animal, animals have spirit bodies and animals are very much a direct reflection of the soul of the person and the collective soul of people on earth. And so um, you could say there's levels of life forms that God has created. And animals are obviously the next one down from us as humans. Uh, we're the only one with a soul. The animals don't have soul. But they are a complete reflection of our soul. And so, you know, they, they are, if you like, the next closest thing to us. And uh, for that reason, every... Like, who wants to live in a world where no animals eat other animals? Mm. Well, in a spirit world, that's what it's like. There's no animals in the spirit world that eat other animals. Because they don't have bodies. No, no. There's a whole lots of animals in the spirit world that have never been created by another per by a person. They've all been created by God. The, the, the animals that have passed from the earth, they do not eat other animals. Well, in the spirit world, nobody eats animals either. <laughs> of course fish is an animal. <laughs> well, you can read into the Bible what you want, but I never multiplied any loaves or fishes. <laughs> I didn't even eat fish, right, in the first century. Yeah. I, gave, I became a vegetarian in the first century in my teens. I was 12 years old, actually. Does that include eggs? Well... Well, it's up to you whether you want to eat eggs or not. And it's up to you whether you want to eat meat or not. I'm not saying <laughs> any rules whatsoever. Am I saying any rules no, to you? No. All I'm saying is that love for others is a great motivator for you to deal with your own emotions. So what I'm saying is, look at the emotional reason why you think you need to eat meat. Because at the moment, it's not loving animals. That's all. So, let yourself feel about that. I, I know animals, in, you know, animals on Earth eat other animals, though. So when you're really saying Why do you reckon they eat other animals? <laughs> Remember what I said. The soul condition of man is impressed upon the animals. So why do you think animals eat other animals on Earth? Because we eat them. Because we eat them. Crocodiles can't live on Earth. <laughs> the biggest dinosaurs in history lived on grass. So the truth is they could. Right? Crocodiles in the spirit world don't live on eating other animals. And they don't need to here. The thing is we need to understand here, and this is something that all of us need to understand at a deeper level. Your soul creates everything around you. Your soul, your feelings, your emotions, your passions, your desires create everything around you, including what happens between animals because of your soul. Right? It's a complete reflection of our collective, what they call consciousness, which I would prefer to call soul condition. Right? So, therefore, a lot of people not paying any attention to all the tigers and and hold the and things like that out there and not thinking that they're worthy, I 
Mm -hmm. um, so that's causing them to be extinct? Yes, yes, definitely. And even in a physical level, but when you think about it, people go out and shoot them for whatever they want from them. You know, af some aphrodisiac or something that they're trying to get from them, or their pelt or whatever. But even from an emotional perspective, that is true as well. I don't know if you've ever experimented with this, but I'm sure if you do experiment with this with birds or something like that around your home, you will notice huge changes in terms of the attractions that occur, in terms of you know what birds come to you rather than to your next door neighbour or whatever. So you know all you need to do is experiment with this to prove it's truth or not. But the truth is, your soul affects every single thing around you. So isn't that a good reason for you to work on your soul? Right? So I'm not just talking your children, I'm talking your, your husband or wife, your children, your dog, your cat, your, your house, your plants in the house, your plants outside of your house are all affected by your soul condition. When I started dealing with my negative emotions, I didn't do anything different with the two plants I had in my house and all of a sudden they grew three feet in the space of about three months. Why did that happen? I didn't do anything different. I watered them once every two weeks, like I always do. <laughs> I didn't do anything else. Why? Because the soul condition change they can feel. And they respond to it. That's what they respond to. Your feelings. Yeah? Right? AJ, in the time of the dinosaurs, when there weren't people on Earth, what was affecting the soul condition, or what soul condition was affecting Tyrannosaurus Rex? Everything was neutral then. And there's an assumption that Tyrannosaurus rex ate meat. And that wasn't, that's not true. Right? Back then. When men weren't here. You had very big teeth then. Yeah, but big teeth don't mean I've got to eat meat with them. There's a lot of animals in there. There's a lot of animals that have big teeth and eat plants. Just um, with the study of body, um, black types and body types, you know, there's belief that Certain body types, like mine, needs to eat meat to, you know, nourish you properly. So, is that just <coughs> is that the way you We can come up with hundreds of intellectual arguments about what our body needs. Experiment with your soul. Mm -hmm. Deal with the emotions inside of yourself and then see whether you feel like eating meat. Yeah, when I was vegetarian, I used to get sick a lot. I didn't nourish so, so, why did you get sick a lot? When you get sick a lot, there's an emotion causing the sickness. So what emotion was it? See, we often, so we often say, all right, no, I need the food. That's what causes my sickness. Now I'm having this food. I don't have the sickness. But there's an emotion behind you needing that food. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And it's that emotion that hasn't been addressed yet. So if you went off meat right now, you'd get sick again. Yeah. I'm saying you would. would I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you would is because it, the emotion... Driving the need for that. Like, I used to eat meat five times a day. So, yeah, I did. I was one of these bodybuilders trying to put on weight, right? Yeah. And honestly, it was just all emotionally driven. So would there be a collective grief in, on Earth for people yes. because they're not connected, many aren't connected to God? Yeah. And so that's a collective, that's one of the collective issues. Yeah. So the whole of humankind on the Earth, and even in the spirit world too, there's, there's areas like this too, where the whole, whole of the people in one region give off an aura, which then it affects every living thing around it. Right? So collectively, all of us are affecting every living thing around us. Right? And we're doing that every single moment. Because it's not our intellect that drives it, it's our, our soul, our emotions. 